שבת שלום. שבת שלום. Shalom, everybody. I can hear the buzzing, too. You're not going crazy. We all hear it. it. Something's going on with our sound system tonight. We are hope that you can hear us, and we hope that you will enjoy the music and the sounds of the service, even beyond whatever is happening back there. Um, and we begin with Shalom Alechem, which can be found on page 24. Shalom Aleichem Aleichem Asherim 
Shabbat Shalom. We just sung of welcoming our angels, and we welcome all of you, our earthly angels, for <clears throat> joining us this Friday night, this Arab Shabbat. Thank you for being here with us for Shabbat services. I am Rabbi Samantha Khan. This is Cantor Sharon, who's going to say her own last name. <laughs> Alkali Leibovich. See, that's why she said it herself. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was You're meant close. to practice and was going to, <laughs> but then the whole sound system happened. But we, but Cantor Sharon is phenomenal if you haven't been here with her on a Friday night before, and we're so lucky to have her tonight. Thank um, you. And we are hoping that whether you're online or in person that you can hear us, and we hope that it will be a meaningful, meaningful night. Let's take a moment. I know I need it after all the chaos of the pre-service to just start with a little bit, a moment of reflection and breath. I invite you to close your eyes if you'd like. Think about the week you're about to leave behind. What from it you want to let go of before you enter into Shabbat and what you want to bring with you as you enter into Shabbat. Hold on to the goodness. Let go of everything else. And take a deep breath and open your eyes. Tonight we will be worshiping from the Mishkan Tefila, the blue prayer books, which can be found under your seats. Uh, and you, if you're in person, you want to make sure that it says Shabbat on the cover. Some of them say weekday or festival, and that will not help you tonight. So Shabbat on the cover. If you're following along online, and you don't yet know, you can follow with our prayer book at cbiboca.org. Click on the menu button in the top left-hand corner. Find the section that says services. Click the live stream section, and there will be a digital prayer book. Once everyone has found their prayer books, we turn to page two and three. We invite Rita to come up. Another last name that I don't say. <laughs> Love you, Rita. We are on page two and three. These Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them. So may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us, as their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light. So may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. We are on page five. We continue with Kiddush as we sweeten our Sabbath day with a little bit of wine. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם בורא פרי הגפן ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר קידישנו במצוותיו ורצבנו ושבת קדשו באהבה וברצון הנחי לנו זיכרון למעשה וראשית כי הוא יום תחילה למקראי קודש, זכר ליציאת מצרים. קיוונו 
בחרת, ואותנו קידשת מכל העמים, ושבת קודשך באהבה וברצון הנחלתנו. ברוך אתה אדוני מקדש השבת אמן וחיים Next we continue with calling out to God with our delight and our awe Our next song Yadid Nefesh can be found a shortened version of it in the middle of page 10 or the complete version on page 332. If you just want to stay around where we're going to be, page 10 will work. buzzing but now we have lights so thank you yeah. we are on page 22 we continue in song where the Hebrew is indented on page 22 with Sadiq Katamar with our Hatsi Kaddish, page 26. Yitkadal v'yitkadal shemei rabba Balma divra chirutei v'yamlich malchutei Bechaye chon v'yom echon Ufchaye dechol v'et Yisrael Bagala, bagala Uvizman kariv V'imru, amen יהי שמי רבה מבורך, לאללה מולל מעל מאיה, יתברך, יתברך וישתבח, ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא, ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל, שמי דקוד אישה בריחו, לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה. 
ליטוש בחטא ונחמתה דמירן בעלמה ואמרו Turn to page 28 and invite all who are able to please rise for our call to worship. Page 28, Barfo. responsibly on the bottom half of page 33, 33. Wisdom and wonder, passion and instruction, story and symbol. All these things your Torah gives to us. And the more we devote ourselves to it, the more it grows and gives. Then this holiest of your works in the living language that gives it form. Baruch atah Adonai, ochev amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem, Kevod Malchuto, Leolam Vaed. You may be seated. We continue on page 36. ואהבת את אדוני אלוהיך בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצווך היום על לבביך ושינתם לבניך ודיברת בם ושבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך. למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם. אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. We are on page 39 on the top of the page. Let us read together. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot. that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there's no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. Page 40.
And then we turn to page 44, 44, and we rejoice with Vishamril. just saying the words B'nai Israel, the children of Israel. And when we talk about the term Israel, there's lots of different ways to understand the term. And there's Am Yisrael, the people of Israel, Medinat Yisrael, the state of Israel, Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. And for those who are new to CBI, we are deep lovers of all three here at CBI. And so as long as we are mentioning Israel in our prayers, we make sure to recognize that we are still heartbroken over what is happening and what happened on October 7th and everything since. We are still praying for the return of the hostages and we are praying for the state of Israel and the people of Israel and the land of Israel to have a quiet, happy, healthy Shabbat. Amen. With that, we stand now, all who are able and rise before God with open lips and heart filled with prayers. We invite everyone to turn to page 46 as we begin our tefillah together.
ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו ואלוהי אבותינו ואמותינו אלוהי אברהם אלוהי יצחק ואלוהי יעקב אלוהי שרה אלוהי רבקה אלוהי רחל ואלוהי לאה האל הגדול הגיבור והנורא אל עליון גומל חסדים טובים וקונה הכל וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות ומביא גאולה לבני ביניהם למען שמו באהבה מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן ברוך אתה אדוני מגן אברהם ועזרת שרה אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני מחיי הכל אתה רב להושיע רוח ומוריד הגשם מכלכל חיים בחסד מחיי הכל ברחמים רבים סומך נופלים ורופא חולים ומתיר אסורים ומקיים אמונתו לאישי נעפר מי חמוך בעל גבורות ומי דומה לך מלך ממית ומחיה ומצמיח ישוע ונאמן אתה לחיות הכל ברוך אתה אדוני מחיה הכל אתה קדוש ושמך קדוש וקדושים בכל ימי לוח הסלע ברוך אתה אדוני האל הקדוש And then we continue on our own through page 62, praying silently and having a seat when we are finished.
Your voice is so beautiful that I, while you sing, I forget for a moment about that horrible noise. <laughs> and then when you're not singing, it comes and back. I have to talk, it comes back. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. So I don't know if it sounds as terrible to all of you out there as it does to us. It doesn't? No, we, we hear it because it's we right hear, here. We hear yeah. it because it's right here? Okay, so then we'll stop. I'll stop worrying about it if you guys, <laughs> if it's not ruining everyone else's Shabbat. And Shabbat Shalom again. <laughs> so do you guys know about our Breakfast with the Clergy program we do on Friday mornings here? So we have this program for preschool parents, um, for those who have their kids who are the Abba or Ima or birthday friend for the Friday morning preschool Shabbat, uh, that the parents can come with them to Shabbat that morning. So on Friday mornings, they come to a breakfast and meet the clergy and have a chance to hang out with us and get to know us a little bit. And every week, Rabbi Keller asks a different question uh, to the families and we go around and each kid has to answer and then parents as well. And at our breakfast with the clergy conversation this morning, um, we asked about special rules that are in different families. What are your favorite rules in your house? As you can imagine, the parents' rules and the kids' rules were different for their favorites, but it was really beautiful. And as I listened, I wondered about the idea that rules and instructions, which might feel very important to some, are possibly irrelevant or even maybe offensive to others. And it made me wonder if in a thousand years from now, will people think that our rules and our instructions and our ways of living were strange and archaic? Will they question or even be disgusted by the basic instructions we have for I don't know, how we make things, or how we communicate with others, or how we navigate a public space. Listening to rules and instructions is important for accomplishing many tasks, from putting together IKEA furniture, to using software, to pleasing family members. We value instruction manuals, and I would even argue we get aggravated when we stumble upon unique circumstances that have no instruction manuals and no instructions for us, you know, like raising children or living with pain and illness or encountering human catastrophe in the world. Since we value detailed instructions in many areas of our life, if you don't know where I'm going with it yet, you'll get there soon, I was wondering, why is it so difficult for us to come to terms with the intricate details of sacrifice found in our Torah this week? Why do so many claim that this week's portion is arcane and unrelatable? Sacrificial rituals might seem completely foreign to us, but we can learn a lot from their details. The sacrifices are done with precision, and the process could not be more detailed-oriented. They have rules, they have instructions, there is a system, and it works. I'm intrigued by the fact that every morning the day began with a strange routine. We're taught that it was the job of the priest to remove a small portion of the ashes from the altar and place it on the floor just next to the altar. The purpose of this ritual was not about tidying up the ashes uh, that were left over from the night before. We know this because the priest only had to remove a very small symbolic amount of trash, of ash, sorry, not trash, ash, big difference. Um, and it's a strange ritual and a strange command, and yet, for some reason, it's in our text. And I believe every section of the Torah has great significance and meaning. We're taught that Rabbi Ben Bagbag said to turn it and turn it and turn it again, for everything is in it. Everything is in it. So how can we turn these rules, these instructions, these strange routines to find value in things that are seemingly ancient and meaningless. Well, thinking about the priest removing the ash, I was talking to a friend about what we could possibly learn from this idea. Rabbi sometimes schmooze when we don't know what to write our sermons about. And one of my friends shared with me this idea that she thinks they remove the ashes 
because they were what was left over from the previous day service, and there's a lesson for all of us that no matter how great yesterday was, every day we need to make space for something new. Whatever was yesterday is gone now, and today we get to start again. That's why the very first step in serving God each morning is the realization that the ashes that represent the old us, the yesterday us, must be removed in order to clear way for the new us, the us of today. This archaic ritual teaches that every single morning we get to start fresh. And if today you're in the same spiritual space that you were in yesterday, well, then maybe you aren't really free. Maybe you're still trapped in Mitzrayim, which, yes, means Egypt, but also in Hebrew can be translated as constraints, the narrow places. So are we trapped by the constraints of our souls that keep us thinking about yesterday when we could be starting fresh every morning? Now, this is just one maybe beautiful, but just one beautiful lesson from our Torah portion. I think every line of this strange text has lessons for us in every archaic verse. I'm not going to go line by line for you, don't worry. But the sacrifices discussed in our parsha, which we have such a visceral negative reaction to, were the Israelites' way of communicating with God, of communicating with the divine. And I think today, still many of us strive to learn how to communicate with the divine and find it challenging to do so. And we're so opposed to the idea of action being part of this conversation with God, but the truth is, is when it's not sacrifice, when it's other actions, we're, we're okay with it, with ritual sometimes, right? Like we light our Shabbat candles, during Tashlich every year. On Rosh Hashanah, we whisper sins or misdeeds or missteps into bread and then cast it into the water. And somehow that physical act of casting it out feels more meaningful than just saying a shamnu together. And even a shamnu is powerful and can be physical when we hit ourselves. Saying sorry in temple is meaningful. Prayer is meaningful, but there's a physicality that brings an extra level. So why don't we have that in our prayer more? We do at some moments. We shovel dirt on a casket. We share a meal at a simcha. But we don't, thank God, sacrifice animals. And let me be clear, I am not arguing that we should. Hasva Halila, we are not going back to a time of animal sacrifice. But there's so much we can learn from the way that our ancestors communicated with God and with each other. The sacrifices existed for different reasons. And for example, the burnt offering that was completely consumed by the fire was supposed to be understood as for uh, making amends of mistakes of the mind and heart. None of us ever think or feel anything mean, right? What are sins we commit of the heart or the mind? Maybe we gossip, we judge, we covet, we speak too harshly. And in doing so, we make mistakes. And often in our life, we long to be able to take it back. In biblical days, you could provide a burnt offering and ask God for forgiveness. Today, we just feel guilty for a long time. We replace situations in our head over and over. What could we have said? What should we have done? Maybe the act of sacrifice offered a way for the cycle to stop. It gave an answer. If you've done ABC, then you can make up for it with X, Y, Z. How much would you love if every mistake you made came with a clear way to fix it? 
sacrifices don't sound so strange anymore, do they? For many of us, it is easy to skim some of the Persiot and Leviticus dismissing the sacrificial system as of little interest or as problematic, yet I think these sections are the foundation of much of the Judaism we love. After the destruction of the temple, the rabbis replaced the sacrificial system, again, thank God, by teaching us to commune with God through prayer and through study. And we've substituted sacrifice for prayer, but really, we are the same as our Israelite ancestors. We are here tonight for community and conversation, the very reasons that drove their gathering and their sacrifices. They needed ways of saying sorry and moving forward, and to be honest, so do we. And they needed reminders to start each day fresh, and let's be honest, so do we. And they longed for the ability to communicate with God. And let's be honest, so do we. And thousands of years from now, even if they have a new way of addressing these core needs, even if they have new instructions for connecting with God and being in community, and even if they look back on our practices today as antiquated or strange, I would be willing to bet that they too, whatever their practices may be, will be finding ways to answer the same core questions and address the same principles that we do with prayer today and that the ancient Israelites did with sacrifice. And even if we don't live to see a day when our norms become unusual to the masses, we can rest assured that the next generation will continue reading these words of Torah and will find connection to Jewish people throughout time in our longing to learn how to be our best selves and how to communicate best with God. And that makes the text ever relevant and everlasting. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. the prayers of the heart will never end because there are so many things we long for, so many things we need. Nobody gets through life untouched. So we take moments to offer prayers of gratitude and at times we ask for more. And tonight we're thinking of others in our community who are in need of healing, those who are in need of healing of body, of mind, or of soul. As a congregation, we're thinking of Tomara Dabi, Michael Alexander, Noah Applebaum, Gary Bandel, Tori Bandel, Joseph Berg, Harold Berger, Diane Browernick, 
Gwen Bullock, Sophie Bullock, Fran Butlin, Shana Call, Janet Cohn, Sanford Cohn, Les Cole, Scott Cohn, Marcia Davis, Mark Davis, Phyllis Eisenberg, Alan Garmis, Stuart Gottlieb, Jordana Hirsch, Donna Hirsch Grossman, Ira Kafka, Shirley Kafka, Naomi Kirstein, Michelle Kingan, Patty Kitt, Russ Lewinter, Howard Manasse, Isaac Margolis, Alan Mintz, Darlene Mintz, Lydia Nahum, Barbara Newmark, Daniel Peskin, Laura Petrella, Carol Porwich, Elliot Porwich, Daphna Rahavia, Julius Rosenberg, Howard Rosenbluth, Eileen Rosengard, Etta Rubin, Kathy Ruggiero, Joshua Levy Salo, David Schwartz, Renee Schwartz, Susan Schwartz Most, Joan Seidman, Ned Shanloff, Patty Shanloff, Danielle Shaw Beal, Karen Seeger, Stanley Silver, George Silver, Helen Silverman, Robin Solpnick, Nelson Soto, Diane Spiro, David Sterling, Christine Sesnap, Sandra Tankus, Stephen Tenner, Norma Uziel, Davida Avital Warshaker, Dave Weiner, Bobby Weider, Leslie Winthrop, Roseanne Youngstein, Miriam Yehoshua Batbaila Dina, Noor Ben Dalia, Mordechai Avraham Ben Malka, Devorah Bat Sara, Shimon Ben Shoshana, Abigail Bat Simona Zahava, and Ben Yosef Ben Zipporah. If there are other individuals you are thinking of at this time in need of healing, please raise your hand. Continue. It's my honor to invite up board member Phil Rothschild to come offer some announcements. Thank you, Rabbi Khan, and a Shabbat Shalom to all of our members and guests. Welcome to Congregation B'day Israel. So we have a lot of announcements. Uh, all of this is on our website, so I'm going to go through more or less in chronological order. Um, but it, so if you and if you have any questions, you can come up to me afterwards. But it is all there on the website. So, 
Women of CBI will be hosting Miriam's Table, a women's lunch and learn on th this coming Thursday, April 4th at 11.30 a.m. Join the women of CBI for an exploration of the true meaning of the Feast of Freedom by women and for women, led by Rabbi Khan and her mom. Next Friday night, April 5th, is a special Shabbat evening service with an ambulance dedication to Magan David Adam from NCEC grandparent Miri Levine. Join us to see a Magan David Adam ambulance in person and for a special courtyard oneg following services, weather permitting. Uh, our film festival founder, Robin Nagel uh, and Rabbi Keller will be hosting a second screening of Supernova, which you may have heard is a film with live footage from the music festival in Israel on October 7th. The screening will be on April 8th at 6.30 p.m. and to please do not miss this very important film and discussion. Rabbi Silvers will be teaching a taste of Melton over lunch on April 10th at 11.30 a.m. We have The Power of Music with Cantor Muchnik and Marianne Altschul which is a three-part series on Thursday nights, April 11, 18, and 25, from 7 to 8.30 p.m., filled with music, prayer, and meditation. Registration is required. And as you heard the, camp, uh, the rabbi talk about the coffee with the clergy that we have for the preschool, well, we also have it for all of you. So coffee and conversation with the clergy, it takes place on Sundays, April 14, 21, and 28, at 11.30. Join the clergy for bagels and coffee, but not on the Passover one, uh, as they discuss the week's Torah portion. CBI is hosting a second night Seder with white glove service in the VIP ballroom on Tuesday, April 23rd, 7.30 p.m. We will also be having the annual Passover Beach Shabbat on Friday, April 26th at 6.30 p.m. We're at a different venue this year. It's gonna be at Red Reef Park Space is limited, so please sign up on the website. And registration is also now open for Hope in Gold, which will be on Thursday, May 9th from 7 to 9 p.m. Join us for a night for women to support the Middleman family on their journey through neuroblastoma by raising funds and awareness for Jewish pediatric cancer organizations. The CBI gift shop has now moved online. You can shop online for various Ju Judaica items and then pick them up at CBI. Congregation B'nai Israel is also doing a mission trip with JNF to Israel from June 30th to July 4th. Israel needs us now more than ever. Come volunteer in Israel to provide immediate relief to the land and the people of Israel. Now, if you can't make the trip, then please join CBI in supporting Jewish National Fund USA which is on the ground every day helping our brothers and sisters in Israel. In addition to continuing to help CBI build our third bomb shelter in Israel, you can visit www.jnf.org and find more ways to assist JNF with their Rebuild Israel Together program. JNF needs your help in order to support evacuees, supply firefighting and protective equipment for civil defense, enable food security, and much, much more. Giving to Israel, your impact matters. And last but not least, please join us after services in the North Social Hall for Oneg. Shabbat Shalom. One other announcement, I see a couple of the kids here. We don't have the binder tonight, so if you come up after the service, we'll just write your name down on a piece of paper to make sure you get stickers and credit. I will make sure you get credit next week for being here tonight. So students can come up to begin the service. Now we are at on page 282, and we invite all who are able to please rise for a leno. Aleinu l'shabach l'adon ha'kol l'tet g'dula l'yotzeo b'reshit sh'lo asanu k'goye ha'ratzot ולא שמענו כמשפחות האדמה שלא שם חלקנו כהם וגור עלינו ככל המונם ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ 
ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו, ושמו, ושמו אחד ושמו thoughts turn now to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked of times of old and new, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. We also as a congregation think of those recently lost and we're remembering Stephen Goldshore, Karen Zuckerberg Rolls, and Alan Cohn. We also remember the yard site, the anniversary of the passing of Rose Kanner, Mervyn Ruskow, Celia Resnick, Albert Spiegel, Margaret Silvestri, Henry Roth, Simon Chrysler, Linda Putter, Manny Goldblatt, Edith Weprin, Arnold Gunnar, Shirley Sachs Metz, Goosey Gortz, Jean Zemnick, Jane Weissman, Natan Kirstein, Norman Fallett, Lori Weissman, Conceta Picoro, Francis Siegel, Claire Meyerson, Jack Troy, Sidney Gershon, and Dr. Dean Penn. If there are other names you'd like to add or pronunciations you'd like to correct, please raise your hand, and when my eyes meet yours, I'll invite you to share. Estelle Bernstein. For the names spoken out loud and all those whose memories guide our lives after they're gone, we join together as a congregation on page 294 for Kaddish Yatom. <laughs> Yiparach v'yishtabach v'yipa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh v'yitadar v'yitalev v'yitalal sh'mei d'kudsha b'richu v'elam minkol v'erchata v'shirata tushpechata v'nechemata t'amiram v'elma v'imru amen v'hei shlama rabba min shemaya v'chaim aleinu v'elko yisrael v'imru amen v'osei shalom v'imromav v'huya osei shalom aleinu v'elko yisrael v'imru amen May the memories of your loved ones always be a blessing to your lives. You may be seated. We turn to page 348 for our closing song. Okay, this should not have 348. <laughs> Shana, shana, shana. 
Let's unwrap the challah. It smells so good. Anyone under the age of bar and bat mitzvah, we invite you to come on up. Come on up. You can help lead Hamotzi, and then you get the first bite of the wahala. Yummy. Blessed are you who have come tonight, and blessed may you be as you leave. Thank you so much. Shabbat shalom. We'll see you in the Oneg. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi.